So I am from Connecticut, believe it or not. Um, I actually have our offices. We have 70 folks in Avon, Connecticut. We're on an old dairy farm, so I'm in like complete foreign land here in, in the city. Um, and I try and stay away from the city as much as possible, no offense. Um, so we have physical silos and barns and everything else. So it, it's a different atmosphere than what you have here. This is very cool. Um, we just did it differently. Um, and there's a lot to be said for what you can do outside of the city and other places. Um, so I've been asked to talk a little bit about who we are. This is our little mission statement. I think every company has one of these. I'm not going to read it. You guys are all well educated and can read. Um, but I've been asked to tell you a little bit about where we came and where we are and what we've done. Um, I started the company in 2009. We've been around seven years. Um, and that's a pretty long duration for an IoT company. Uh, we launched the first product was called iGrill. Um, if you might, you might have seen it in Apple Retail, we launched in Apple Retail in 2010. And just to give you a little background on me so I don't get bombarded with the wrong questions later, I didn't graduate college. I don't have an engineering degree, obviously. I can't write code. I don't do apps. I don't do anything with regard to drawing UI or what words I does. So please, <laughs> I'm not there. Um, I was actually a stockbroker at the time, grilling in my backyard, had an iPhone, and said, damn, this grilling thermometer from Brookstone should really connect to my phone and not connect to this separate little device that I had to carry around as I was grilling food. Um, put out a provisional patent, thanks to Google. Um, I Googled how to, f how to build a product from the ground up, uh, put together a bunch of uh, contractors from around, actually some from New York, um, in the Bronx, um, as well as in Connecticut and upstate New York. And that's how the company was born. We came with the product. I actually had no friends at Apple, so we have a very close relationship with Apple, as you'll see. Um, but I had no friends. I actually got into Apple through a cold email, um, believe it or not. Um, so this is our company now. We sit about, this is an old picture, actually. We need to update that. That's our, we're about 70 folks um, on Avon. We do everything in-house, so that's kind of what we hang our ha hat on. Um, from ideation through to creation, through even to customer service. For me, it was big to make sure that even the customer service stayed local. They're in our facility. They work directly with our QA, QC in terms of taking care of the customers. So when you look at the history of the company, you know, 2009 launch, 2010 launch in Apple Retail. Um, there was two people when we launched in Apple Retail. I used about seven different aliases on email because I was customer service, finance, orders, uh, you know, I'd answer telephone calls in the middle of CES for, you know, technical support. So I, I've been there, done that for any of you that are, you know, in the entrepreneurial phase of your business. Um, where we sit today, we struck that great relationship with Apple. We now have a good relationship with Google and Amazon as well. Um, I couldn't develop to every platform. So those are the three platforms that I went after in the marketplace. Um, in February of this year, we sold iGrill. Um, to Weber Stevens products, uh, which is the Weber Grill Company. Um, so we got liquid in that portion of the company. We sold that asset only and kept all the people, all the IP, and all the products that we currently have in the marketplace today, which are primarily focused around home automation. Uh, in 2014, um, some of my buddies at Apple asked us for a meeting at CES. We walked into a little room with a bunch of papered up walls. And they sat down and they said, we're going to really go into home automation big, and you're one of seven companies that we've chosen to do this with. Um, we were by far the smallest. I mean, like it was Allegiant, Schlage, Locks, it was Honeywell and these big guys, and we were the small fry. So a little intimidating. I thought about it for about a half a second and said, okay, yeah, we're in. You know, I went back to my board of directors and said, let's pivot and step out of cooking and grilling and go into home automation with Apple, eventually now with Google, Google Home, and Amazon with Echo. Um, so in total, um, we don't publish this usually, but we've raised only about 20 million in capital. I say only, but 20 million in capital over seven years in comparison to uh, other folks that are out there in the same space, you got August Locks, you've got Smart Things, well, you had Smart Things and various other folks, um, even Quirky. So uh, we've been pretty prudent with our capital. We also have a great opportunity in being in Connecticut that is a relatively low cost of doing business for us. We have tremendous talent. Um, we've been able to garner some of the top talent from missile defense. Um, a lot of the folks in uh, UTC, Suns Hamilton Sunstrand, ESPN, they all are based in Connecticut, so we have some great opportunities to take talent from those folks. And we create a great opportunity in terms of the place where we work. Um, 
this is out there. I mean, you, again, you guys are all very smart. IoT is a great place to be in right now. It's, it's growing astronomically. We see tremendous growth over the next uh, 12 to 18 months. We would actually position this year for smart home and uh, home automation as a transitional year. Um, there's a lot of confusion in the marketplace. There has been. Everybody's tried to create their own ecosystem. My personal opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, you hang your hat with the people that have the most money, the biggest user base, and control the operating systems. So for me, that was Google, Apple, and Amazon Echo in, in terms of user base. I haven't, I have a fine, uh, finite number of developers, so I can't develop to every platform, and nor do I believe you should. There's going to be some clear winners. Usually if your bank account's the biggest, you tend to win, and you can uh, innovate, buy, or, you know, um, or really just squash the competition, which we've seen in some cases in terms of growing that space. Um, this is when we started. You know, we've been in WW a bunch of times. We'll be in next week. We've, we've had some great opportunities, and that definitely helps. Um, there's some cachet in terms of being in Apple retail. Um, it isn't easy, it's, um, but it does bring everybody else. We've never made an outbound call. My retail team consists of two people in terms of retail sales team. Um, we're, and just to give you an example, iGrow was in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Asia Pacific, Europe, uh, UK, Turkey, South Africa, and Russia. Um, and it was two people. Actually, it was one for a while. We were down a person, but um, we did that very efficiently, and all the retailers came to us. So um, we were in a unique, very uh, good position. Um, that is not the case now, and we have a lot of competition. A lot of the folks up there you would consider even competitors to our products today. So, you know, when we look at it, I was asked to talk about a few key things, and this is kind of our product line for 2016 that we've announced at CES last year. Um, when you look at, you know, lessons learned, right? Um, you know, we built our own IoT infrastructure, uh, not on the backbone of Amazon or Google or anybody else. That was a big expense, but it's paying tremendous dividends now because there's a lot of folks out there, uh, you probably have heard of Ayla, Zonoff, all the different guys that will provide the back end for you that you can tie into and they charge you a little royalty every device. We don't have the wherewithal to kind of pay that royalty in the product uh, that we have and that we sell into the market today. So we went out and built it ourselves, and we're seeing tremendous dividends. It's built on our own servers in San Jose and in uh, New York, here in New York. Um, that we run, operate, maintain in a co-location facility. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about manufacturing lessons. So we have four different manufacturers over in China. We have a small team in Hong Kong that manages those folks for us. Um, that is probably one of the most important relationships that we've had over the last seven years. Um, the right manufacturer can make or break you. Uh, quality, quality assurance, having the people on the street, in the, in the community, of you know China or Hong Kong or wherever you're going to manufacture is really key. Uh, and we have a tremendous team there. Um, when we look at HomeKit, everybody says, "Why HomeKit? Why did you join Apple?" You know, Echo wasn't around when we started with Apple, and we made a huge investment, a little over ten million dollars, into Apple's HomeKit. Um, when you look at that development, we had to look at the pure user base, right? Over a billion users, paying customers, and we looked at our own statistics. So as you go into this. Um, and you start to develop a user base. iGrow, just to give you an idea, has right now, give or take, about a million two users. On an average weekend, we get about 550 to 700,000 app sessions in that product. So it's a highly used product, highly adopted product that we can get a lot of stats out of. So we drove a lot of our, uh, our reasoning for going into HomeKit through those stats. 87% of our users were iOS versus Android. Um, they just tended to buy a lot more of the product, and they didn't buy one, they would buy two. And it was a lot of word of mouth, so a lot of you are aware of social media and everything else. Well, we did integration with Facebook about grilling. Doesn't seem really sexy. Guess what? Mark Zuckerberg liked it. He posted on his Facebook page and said, hey, I'm grilling with an iGrill. Guess what they have? They have Facebook integration. Check out, I'm grilling a Fred steak. Proceeded to crash our servers back in that day and, and shut down everything because we went from like 60 hits an hour to 1,800 per second. But um, it was a tremendous opportunity. I asked him next time, just give us like an hour heads up and we'd be able to you know, load balance the whole thing. But it was a, it was a great opportunity. Um, so in the social media range, you know, we're, we've been able to really capture a lot of that, and we have a lot of word of mouth. So what you're seeing today, um, you know, in IoT for smart home and smart home automation, I believe is the evolution that iGrow went through. So iGrow was 
30, 40,000 units a year. We were plugging along. There was maybe 10 of us. We weren't doing anything. I didn't do anything, swear. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, we were plugging along and we were just doing our thing. And what you saw was a steady traction and that steady climb where the adoption rate rose simply because there was a great presence in the marketplace, both with retail but also with the consumer. The consumer word of mouth grew that product more than anything. We actually, this is a true story, I sat in uh, Starbucks out in Indianapolis and I'm sitting there, there's two gentlemen and it's an interesting demographic too because I'll share that with you. If you look at, um, they're sitting there and they were about maybe 70, 72 years old, retired for sure, having their coffee and the guys sitting next to me and I'm on a couch and all I hear is, yeah, you stick the probe in the meat and you just connect your phone, it connects automatically and it tells me when my meat's done. I was like, no way. And my CMO was sitting next to me. So I walk over and I say, you wouldn't be having to talk about it and be talking about iGrow. He was like, yeah, you have one? I was like, well, I invented the product. He was like, well, I'm trying to sell one. He's like, I sold seven of those things for you guys. He's like, I'm trying to sell one to my buddy to get it here. Um, long story short, I sent him one for free, but then he said, you know, why don't you have more products like thermostats and like plugs and things like that? And that's how our evolution really took place. And that's what you need is that great word of mouth. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we learned a lot about, and I talk back to the demographics, you know, you think about a grilling cooking thermometer. Father's Day was huge for us, right? But Mother's Day was as well. Our demographics were actually 35 to 75. Right? So you'd think like younger, early adopters would be the primary. This was my own wrong hypothesis. Um, it was 60 40 men to women, um, which blew my mind. I was like, okay, more women growing than I thought, or using it in the kitchen because you could use it in the kitchen. Um, and then we really just tried to embed as many analytics around the use case as we could so that we could learn a better product. I will give you one piece of advice in dealing with retail they know nothing. Absolutely nothing, okay? Do not believe them, they are not God. Um, I started that product at 99 bucks. Everybody said, nobody's gonna buy a grilling thermometer for 99 bucks. It's way too flippin' expensive, gotta reduce it. We're in a bunch of retail, we're in Apple. Um, I won't throw Apple under the bus, but it was primarily like the targets of the world and the depots, gotta get cheaper. We dropped the price to 79, guess what happened? Nothing, absolutely nothing happened. No rise in sales, no nothing. We went out, started with V2, launched V2. We actually went to our consumers and said, hey, what would you pay for this, right? Did the market research now that we had a user base that was using it and connected products were newer I mean, were newer in the beginning and they had been more broadly accepted as we got further down the pike. Um, they said 99 up to 139. So we launched at 99. That $99 product outsold our $39 product because we made a mini version that we thought would be nice to get them a toe in the water or stocking stuffer. $99 product outsold the $39 product almost five to one. So just, I would strongly encourage you, retail doesn't know anything, ask your market, ask your, you know, work with uh, customer bases if you can identify them to learn more about what they're actually willing to pay. Um, again, I wasn't a pro at this, so I learned as I went. Some of you are probably a lot smarter than I am. I now have 70 people that I rely on to be a lot smarter than I am, so I don't have to be the smartest one in the room, nor should you ever think you are. If you are, you're typically the dumbest, just FYI. Um, so as I sit today, you know, my job is doing a lot of this and talking, which is fun. Um, but I do have a lot of lessons learned, so I, I welcome the questions, I welcome the opportunity to share with you anything that I can. Um, while we're not the most wildly successful company, we have done it. We've done it, you know, in rural Connecticut, of all places. Everybody goes, where are you again? Where is, it? some people don't even know where Connecticut is, you know, we're between New York and Boston. Oh, okay. And so, you know, um, believe it or not, the geography is not our strong suit in this country. Um, so, you know, with that, I'll open it up to any questions that you might have, and I'm happy to, you know, walk around afterwards and meet with any of you and talk. Did you have any products that failed, and also what were the key pivots that you had in the development of your set of products? Yeah, so as we sit today, um, I'll tell you my bastard child that I didn't do a good job with was a product called iShower. 
right? 2009, 2010, iGrow was doing okay. I was like, oh, we gotta get another product out there. Shower speaker, connects to your phone, everybody drops their phone in a cup, usually drops it in the toilet or the sink at the same time, number one return to Apple. This sounds like a great idea. Fortunately, absolutely no IP around that other than the design. So China knocked it off a gazillion times, commoditized that market in no time, and we lost our first move, market mover advantage. Um, that and the HomeKit opportunity would be our biggest pivot, right? We had a strategic roadmap of how we were integrating cooking and grilling into commercial, into industrial, uh, across a whole number of platforms and a strategic roadmap. Uh, when we were offered that opportunity, we had to make that decision to pivot, so, yes. You said that you're not an engineer and you can't code. Can you speak about um, going from, you know, an invest a stockbroker uh, with an idea to finding an engineer who could actually build it and build it to the quality that you imagine in your head and sort of an ordinary guy finding um, the talent to be able to build what you imagine? Yeah, um, a lot of it has to do with the culture that you create. So if you come to a, um, I get asked that a lot, and I was asked by Entrepreneur Magazine, what were some of my best advice and my worst advice? So I won't even take credit for my best advice. It was Anthony Atuno. He was a former Kmart CEO. You might not think highly of Kmart, but he was the longest tenured uh, CEO of Kmart. Um, actually brought in like Martha Stewart and all those brands into that store. Um, sat next to him on a plane, asked him a simple question like you just did, what was your, what would your best advice be? He said, surround yourself with great people. He said, and then I would add a caveat to that, give them the opportunity to do what they do best without you micromanaging them. It's the hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do is to let go of the reins. Um, you know, if you bring in great talent and you hire somebody and you pay them a lot of money, let them do what they do best. You hired them for a reason. Um, we've been voted best place to work for the last two years in the state of Connecticut. Uh, we give breakfast, lunch, and dinner to all our employees. They can take it home to their families for five bucks. Um, we have a you know on-staff chef. We have five, six beers on tap, much like here. We have you know free snacks, free soda, and all that sort of good stuff. And we have daycare and all the caveats that go along with that. Um, so we don't pay the best. I think it's the work environment that you create and how you value them. Personally, I look at my company. And I say if my daughter walked in or my son walked in and came home that day and said, this is what they offered me in terms of benefits, this is what they offered me in terms of work environment, this is what they offered me in terms of future with the company. We give everybody equity too. Um, I would want to be able to say, yeah, that's a great opportunity and jump on it. So, golden rule, man. Treat others how you want to be treated. Thanks. Uh, how do you think about the evolution of living spaces? I mean, do you, since you're creating household products, uh, do you think about living spaces evolving into transient living spaces, the way we live in cities, does it matter for your core product line? How is the living space evolving? I mean, we're seeing a lot, of the, the evolution is here, right? Um, the evolution of your living space, we believe in full AI eventually, um, but with permission, we're big into permission because there's still a lot of pushback from the consumer in terms of that the ability to just kind of make presumptions about what they're gonna do or if they want that done for them. Um, so I believe wholeheartedly in where we're going and we're seeing it. Um, the biggest hindrance, I believe, for the industry right now is the lack of professionalism of some of the companies. Um, the amount of money that we invest in customer service and return, in returnability in standing behind your product, delivering a quality product, um, there's been a lot of uh, mistakes and um, those have cost us as business owners a lot in terms of credibility with the consumer. So building that credibility and building a world-class team that will stand behind it and actually uh, you know, take care of the customer is, is paramount. So kind of long-winded answer, sorry. Great, thank you.